So where are we going on week five? I'm very excited for the n- the next one, which is the Harley Race episode. Oh, okay, yes. Yeah, I'm very excited about this. Um, obviously, as you and I discussed in the episode, one of the toughest men ever in wrestling. Um, you know, and somebody who endured so much, you know, in terms of what, um, you know, he put himself through physically in the ring and for as long as he did. Uh, and someone who also endured a lot of personal tragedy, you know, uh, with the passing of his wife and the auto accident um, and everything that happened to him later in his career. Um, and so we we definitely touch in uh, touch on all of that. But the most exciting thing about this episode uh, is the the absolute treasure trove of never before seen uh, video and photos that we were able to get for this episode. It is the largest, most amazing collection of stuff that uh, we've ever gotten for any episode. It's it was it was amazing. Um, That's what uh, I was going to ask you about. It actually includes the oldest video that we know that exists of Harley in the ring, correct? That's right. Yeah. So it was it was a uh, 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 Justin, his son and um, Yvonne, his ex-wife, basically said they were going to send a small box of stuff. <laughs> and, uh, you know, shout out to John Boucher, who works on the show uh, with us doing a lot of the archive uh, research. They sent him a, a three a three foot by three foot box, <laughs> like a hand truck, like a guy from FedEx with a hand truck brought it up to his apartment and they went and basically I think somebody had gone through Harley's storage space and just unloaded anything related to wrestling and put it in that box. And um, you had reels and reels of old eight millimeter film, quad reels, VHS tapes, photo albums, you know, loose fo- photos. Oddly enough, a furry toilet seat was uh, included <laughs> from the 70s in this box. Not sure what that relates to, but that was in there. Uh, his actual wedding album, like from his wedding with, uh, you know, was amazing. But yeah, the footage you're referring to is, uh, and John, you know, from his research has indicated that it's the earliest known wrestling footage he's ever seen. It's very quite possible that somewhere in the WWE warehouse, you know, there's maybe some AWA footage or there's some Florida stuff that's never been seen. Maybe that's in there. But as far as what's available to us, um, it is from his first or second tour of Japan. Um, and he because you can tell because he has like the dyed blonde hair and he's got the handsome Harley jacket. So it's got to be 68 or 69 um, from when the footage is from. And it's just amazing to see because not only do you see him in the ring, but you see sort of like this eight millimeter travelogue footage of him you know, wandering around Japan, uh, you see him on a bullet train, just hanging out with giant Baba and his wife. (laughs) And it's like this amazing, you know, film footage, which we transferred. And it's just, it's, it's crazy. But I think the, so that's amazing. But my favorite thing that was included was, and this is going to blow people's minds. It was, uh, uh, eight millimeter footage of a house party that the Harley, the Harleys hosted, uh, with the funks. So you actually see all this footage of Harley and his wife, Tori, Tori, <laughs> Terry Funk, Dory Funk Sr. And, uh, and Jr. just hanging out, drinking, smoking cigars, dancing uh, in, in Harley's house in the late 60s. And they're all just hanging out. And it's you just never see footage of especially guys like that um, just hanging out and being themselves, you know. Um, That's wild. It's going to blow people's minds. Well, yeah. and you mentioned, you know, Harley, not only did he do a lot of damage to his body in the ring and had a tremendous pain threshold and ability to just power through it, but also the the other physical damage he'd done to himself and a major car wreck when they, they wanted to yeah. amputate his leg when he was right. just starting in the, in the wrestling business and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, boating later on, boating accidents and, and you know, just various things because he he put a lot of miles on on his chassis in in his life, Definitely. and I'm surprised that you know that he was able to go as long as he did without suffering so many of the effects that he had later on in his life. But you know, just one of the most fascinating people and one of the the most influential guys in the ring in the modern wrestling era. And something you said in the episode uh, is sort of making the distinction of like he is such a connection to the early days of wrestling because he started in the carnival circuit. Yeah. 
you know, and, and, and it, well, and and the Zabiscos because, right. you know, obviously the I think they were close to eighty or thereabouts at that point in time, but with Harley being a teenager and training with the Zabiscos, who were literally, especially Stanislaus, was not only world champion but a pioneer of when organized pro wrestling was being formed in the mm -hmm. 19-teens, he had such an incredible old school, not, not just the, the holds he was taught or the things in the ring, but the way of looking at the business and understanding the business. He was, you know, first broken in by these people that were involved in inventing it. Mm-hmm. Exactly, which is amazing. It's amazing. So that that's all covered in there. Um, one more thing about the archive that was funny uh, in the box that was sent uh, from the family. There was a VHS tape that was labeled like handwritten that said Harley's greatest matches VHS tape. <laughs> and we're like, oh, shit, oh, here shit. it is. Here's the gold mine. And John went to put it in his VCR and he played it. And uh, unfortunately, Harley had uh, taped over that uh, and it had, had taped Fletch 2 over that. Oh, so, my God. <laughs> so unfortunately, <laughs> that's all that was on there. <laughs> yeah. God damn it. Um, I, I, I can see him now. Hey, greatest match. Ah, the fucking Fletch is on. Yeah, exactly. Fletch 2, mind you. Um, and then, uh, yeah, but it's it's fascinating. This th this episode is obviously gets into the, the, the legendary career, but also the tall tale legends of Harley as well. And, you know, he's somebody that uh, it seemed to me that he didn't tell a lot of the true, you know, like the stories or really disputed much of anything that occurred in his life. He sort of liked to let these stories live on as legends. That's at least the impression yeah. that I get. And um, so there is a lot of distinction between, you know, what in some of these wilder, crazier stories that people have told over the years, you know, what's the. You know, like, uh, did they happen? Did they happen slightly differently? Has it taken on a life of its own? And that's always kind of fun to uh, to consider. Yeah, because Harley always had that twinkle in his eye and kind of look at the corner of his eye when people are talking about something. Like, let him believe whatever the fuck. It's, mm -hmm. it's more it's more fun that way. He'll sit back and and listen. Totally, a hundred percent. Yeah, and I, and, I, and, I, and I love that. I love that. That's a uh, you know again. Hopefully, Harley's. His his main heyday came before the modern pay per view era, and but at the same time, he's one of those guys that was an influence on so many talents, and so many people still talk about him and with reverence, whether it be everybody from Ric Flair to CM Punk. Mm -hmm. That hopefully the modern audience will still, you know, they need to hear of more detail about this guy and see some of this footage because they probably just heard stories. But I think that. He's one of those guys that still his name has lived on with a modern audience that, uh, you know, might want to find out, you know, where all this craziness came from. I, I definitely think that, you know, your more your younger fan, your more casual fan is going to walk away with a lot of a lot more respect uh, for Harley and how he did pioneer a lot of that hard hitting, heavy hitting you know, wild style, um, definitely 100%. Because people my age, unfortunately, they might only know him from his King Harley Race days. <laughs> you know, yeah. if, you didn't, well, if you don't do your homework, you know, so. Father time catches up with all of us. But that that was the thing I've, you know, made to comment uh, when we were talking about somebody a while back that passed away. I, uh, it was Rocky Johnson. I said, right. I'd been watching Rocky Johnson, but Harley Race comes into territory. And immediately Rocky Johnson has the best match I've ever seen him in. Mm -hmm. And then later on, I saw him with so-and-so and yeah, well, he's that guy, the best match I've ever seen. And the common factor was Harley. Mm. It was amazing. The, and the, the bumps, just the, not only the constant motion, but the, the perfect safe landing every time over and over. It wasn't safe cumulatively, but right. in the long run, but you know, that was the thing for years. Harley was going from town to town having the best match with insert name here in the local territory that the fans there had ever seen that guy have. And it wasn't even filmed probably. So he oh, was Oh no, probably, most of them weren't. No. Yeah. He's probably taking these insane bumps and risks and, you know, being slammed on the concrete and whatever night after night. And yeah, 
he's kind of just tearing the house down <laughs> wherever he goes. But well, and, and that was the thing that with you know because I'd seen Jack Briscoe was an incredible worker, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Dory Funk Jr. was also, but in world title matches, they would have their match a lot more than sometimes the local heroes match or local challengers match mm -hmm. with Harley because of his style he could let the local guy do the his shit and just take bumps for it and it was it was a better showcase of the local guy and and you know made him stronger in the in the long run because otherwise everybody's like fuck Briscoe and Funk are just tying these motherfuckers up or you know wrestling and if you went to a territory that wasn't particularly raised on that yeah. Anyway, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well, and speaking of just real quick, speaking of of Jack Briscoe, we also uh, were able to get Gerald Briscoe in the episode. So uh, it's the first time he's ever sat for our cameras, um, and he's in another episode later on this season. Um, but just so great to talk to 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 Gerald. He's just amazing. I just, yeah, he's the best. And, and and Jerry was there for so <clears throat> much through so many, you know, turbulent moments in wrestling history from the late sixties through, you know, two years ago or whatever. He's been around so long and he's seen so much of this stuff. He, uh, and he's been involved in pivotal points. And another one of your subjects you alluded mm -hmm. to 